Soldier Today podcast is a product of the Non-Commissioned Officer and Soldier Programs Directorate at the Association of the United States Army. Soldier Today's subjects focus on those topics that are relevant and needed by our soldiers and their families serving the regular Army, Army National Guard, and the Army Reserve. Hello everyone, I'm Sergeant Major of the Army Retired Dan Daly, and welcome to this edition of Soldier Today podcast. Back in April, we checked in with the Army for an update on the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact it was having on our Army, our soldiers, and their families. Today, the Army is still dealing with the effects of COVID-19, and as the nation and the Army continue the fight against the pandemic, the Army also remains focused on its mission and its priorities, and it has set to advance the capabilities well into the future. At the forefront of those priorities is the Sergeant Major of the Army. The 16th Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Grinston, is debuted on the cover of the most recent issue of Army Magazine. The story is titled, Grinston's Great Expectations. SMA Grinston is on a mission, a mission to change the culture of the Army, and he recently sat down with our team to talk about what he expects to accomplish and how he intends to do it. Here to talk to us today about the things he's doing to shape the culture of the Army and give us an update on how the Army is doing is the 16th Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston. SMA, thanks for taking the time to update our listeners, and welcome back to the Soldier Today podcast studio. Dan, thanks. It's always great to see your photo on the cover of the magazine, I say. I'm the first one to have it on there. You're the youngest Sergeant Major of the <laughs> Army, but I just wanted to say, you know, I, I finally made it. I'm big time now. You have, Sergeant Major. And you look very good in that new Army uniform, by the way. A handsome fellow on the front that of the car. Yeah. That you <laughs> designed. <right>. I got <laughs> it. But check it out, listeners, if you haven't seen the new issue of Army Magazine with S.M.A. Grinston. And he's right. The first time a Sergeant Major of the Army has ever been debuted on the cover of Army Magazine. So SMA, if you're okay with it, let's jump in. And I thought we'd start today with a little discussion about the pandemic. We've been talking about this for some time and we discussed the topic in detail. But with the recent news regarding the new Delta variant and so many vaccines left to administer across our country, can you talk about what the Army is doing to continue the fight against COVID-19? Yeah, thanks for that question. You know, first, I just want to lead off with, please, if you have the opportunity, please get vaccinated. I know there's a lot of information out there. We've done a couple of Instagram where we had this conversation. But the key to getting rid of this new variant and all the variants are folks that are vaccinated. I understand we have a young, healthy population. Normally, we have a young, healthy population. That's just how we compare to other Americans. We're normally fair fine, but sometimes it's not about you. It's about the others around you you may spread it to those others. So we're really concerned about this as the whole country is, but specifically in the Army, I'm still encouraging everyone that has the opportunity to go ahead and get vaccinated. And then the second thing that's really controversial in the Army is wear a mask if you're not vaccinated. And can commanders ask you that? And we found out, yeah, we can. And then, yeah, If you're in the military, there may be some repercussions if you don't wear your mask and you're not vaccinated. So we're all worried about this. We don't want to see the country shut down again. We don't we want to see our military kind of go forward. But again, as we look to the future, the secretary of defense has not said you will get vaccinated yet. But I still encourage everyone. We have the opportunity. We have the vaccines to the best extent to get vaccinated and then go with the facts. Like I said, we did one Instagram live where we said, hey, what are you worried about? And one source said, well, it's going to be in me, this virus, and we're going to inject the virus in you. That's not what the doctors are saying. Yeah. It just teaches your body how to react when you see this. The second time vaccination, when you get the two doses, that first one, you go, oh, your body goes, oh, this is how you react to it. And then you get the second one, you're like, ah, what happened? You feel kind of crappy for like a day. But The key is to know what actually happens. Talk to a doctor when you want to get your facts. That's all I would encourage everybody and please get vaccinated. And that's the big debate that we're going in. Yes, you have to wear a mask. The commander tells you, and yes, we can't ask you, but I encourage everybody to get vaccinated. Well, we appreciate that, SMA. We can't agree with you more. Everybody's got to do our part, especially soldiers. You know, it's defending our country. And this is the way they do it at home, getting vaccinated and help get through this fight because that's what it is. You know, throughout 2020, and you mentioned it, Sergeant Major, continuing into 2021, millions of Americans experienced challenging times, and our soldiers and their families were no exception to what has transpired over the last 18 months. I was hoping you could share a few thoughts with our listeners on 
How are our soldiers and their families doing across the, the Army right now? You know, as a country, we're all excited to get out, you know, and see our families. And I'm no different. I finally, after almost two years, I went to go see my mom, who's, you know, older. We're all just excited as a country. So the same thing with our soldiers. We're doing well, but we had to follow up with some policy, too. So we look at special leave accrual. The Secretary of the Army just recently signed that and said, okay, we're going to let you accrue some more leave over the next, because it was going to end this year, we extended another year. Mm -hmm. COVID is going to be lingering. Can you take your leave in the whole, and really look at those soldiers overseas. How do you take leave? So I think we're doing well. You know, we're starting to come out of this as a country, but also there's still things challenging and lingering for our National Guard and, and our Army Reserve. And one of those things we got to get reimbursed for the funding of the capital. It's a $500 million bill, and that's still out there, and we have to get reimbursed for that. Yeah. Or we don't want to just shut down the Army National Guard from, you know, 1 August to, you know, 1 October. But that's lingering. We really need to do that. Our Army National Guard and our Army Reserve soldiers have really done the yeoman's work in the last year with the response to COVID, response to civil unrest, response to capital, yeah. response yeah. to this. We got to reinforce that. They're doing well. They've done great. They continue to support us and all of us, active guard and reserve through this time time. But then even as we move forward with some of the other things is we're leaving Afghanistan, we're leaving Iraq. Uh, so uh, there's still a lot of things going on in your military and especially your army. This year, done phenomenal work. You know, General Miller coming out of Afghanistan, what a phenomenal leader that he's done and, uh, you know, Sergeant Major Matheny over there with him. So the Army is still busy, all components. Uh, we've still got a lot of things going on. Those are just a few things that we're looking at, but everybody's doing well. Well, that's good to hear, Sergeant Major. Brighter days are in front of us. We've been doing a series of podcasts on our Soldier Today podcast show with the National Guard, and it's incredible to hear the things they're doing, not only in response, as you said, SMA, to the pandemic, but just all the other things that our National Guard soldiers do in their home communities and abroad. So. SMA, last month, you gathered a select group of senior NCOs for what is normally your annual senior enlisted training and leader development conference. But due to COVID, some physical presence for many issues was an issue. But my understanding is that didn't hinder what you wanted to accomplish. Can you share some of the details of what you set out to do during your conference this year? We've had a few turns at this. It kind of started probably on your tenure. We wanted to have a really rich discussion. And how do we solve some of these really difficult army problems. So we did want to give some information. So we even changed it from a conference to a forum. Sometimes, you know, you think I'm going to come in and I'm just going to receive information. We did do a little of that, but we really wanted to say, how do we break down into small groups? So we had eight different teams and we broke it down. You're going to have cohesive teams. You're going to have the group that looks at how they train. And what does that mean? How they train, discipline and fit. So those were the four. And then we had two groups looking at those four areas. How does a cohesive team relate to the harmful behaviors? So on the left was the aim point, meaning I'll just take one. I want zero suicides. How does having a cohesive team build off of less suicide? So that would be the primary driver. But then what we really wanted to focus in was maybe the secondary driver and then the idea. And that idea may not look like hey, let's fix suicide, sexual assault, racism, extremism. And you could say zero suicides, cohesive teams. And that idea is if I get you through the first 180 days and you are a cohesive member of my team, does that all the way relate to having less of this? Yeah. So we broke those down into four groups times two. There was two groups looking at cohesive teams, two groups that look at discipline, two groups that look at fit. And then what were the ideas? And then how did that drive through? And one of the ideas was if I get you through the 180 days, that'll have a long-term fit. But the second thing that came out of that was who owns it? Yeah. So uh, it's great to have a great idea, but you know, who's gonna drive this through? And what I found, again, it's normally me, and I'm telling it myself is, when did I specifically look at these four areas to drive this completely all the Absolutely. way down to the arm? And I didn't, I didn't have a form. So we have the senior enlisted training leader development form and we do it annually. So I actually just took off all the other meetings 
and said, no, I want to drive this through the Army. Normally you have a meeting with the division sergeant majors, you have the trade dog, I said, take all that on. I want to drive, if I am serious about what I'm talking about, we have to own it. So we developed a new meeting and we just did it last week and said, hey, we're going to come in and we're really going to focus in on cohesive teams, highly trained, disciplined and fit. And the idea was in that first 180 days. So we got a lot of work to do it, but the good news, we're going to do it every month. Absolutely. We're not going to wait till next year. Sorry, Major, I want to dig into these categories a little bit more. But before we do, just so you can frame for our listeners, why did you choose those categories? Can you describe the context of how you said, this is the things that the Army needs to focus on? Well, we kept talking about it. Well, pretty simple, the chief told us. You know, he said, I want cohesive teams that are highly trained <laughs> disciplined fit. It's just, yeah. you know, I'm a soldier, you know, do what you're told. We had the concept, we had the guidance from the chief of staff of the Army. So cohesive teams, highly trained disciplined fit. But how did that correlate and what was the idea that we could learn from to drive the behavior? So that's how we did it and said, or do we drive that? It does that work? We can't just look at it next year. We got to look at it monthly to see, does it work? You can be loose on the idea, meaning you just had an idea. It was 880 days. Mm-hmm. Well, next time we might find it, it really needs to be 30 days. But we don't need to wait a year to do that. We go, well, let's, it's not working. So let's change it. We know what the aim point is. We know what we want. We want a cohesive team that has less suicides. So we know that. That's fixed. But the idea may not be working. But the only way you can change that idea and be flexible on that, you got to meet and say, hey, it's not working. And the third thing is we have to share that across the Army. Absolutely. Yeah. So it can't be compliance. It's just, you know, you go, you inspect, you didn't meet the inspection, and now, therefore, you're a terrible person. <laughs> so that's not the goal of the meeting. The goal is to say, it didn't work. We tried it. Let's learn from it. Let's all talk about it across the Army. That's why all the senior mission command enlisted for every installation in the Army, active guard and reserve, and said, this idea. And then somebody goes, oh, that's a great. Let's try it. And then next month we'll go, well, that didn't work. Or it doesn't work in my location. And then how do we learn from it? So the most important piece is learning from that. But the idea started from cohesive team, Tyler Drake, Dismuth. Well, thanks for sharing that process with us and where that came from. And how important it ties in, like you said, SMA. Listeners out there who are very wise, they have listened to our conversations in the past, our major, both on the podcast series and our noon reports, have heard us talk about, this is my squad. How does all this fit together? Well, it's all about the culture. And if you're a member of a team that shows ownership, we talked about the personal pronoun, my, my squad, my squad leader, or that's my squad member. We talked about knowing your folks. I think all that, that's kind of the overarching theme of a cohesive team that's highly trained discipline fit. In my squad, we really know each other. It's not just I showed up and work, you're the leader, I'm the follower, but I know what you like, what you don't like. I've called your parents. Even in the Office of Star Major, we pulled out our DD Form 93s and started calling people on the phone roster. It's amazing. And when, when I travel, I say, hey, has anybody called your parents? And let's call them. I'm giving you a coin, let's call your mom and her dad. And, well, were they in the military? Like, yeah, even the National Guard soldier. He goes, yeah, my dad was artillery. And I was like, let's call him. I think I know him. <laughs> so I actually did. He's like, call him. He's like, oh, yeah, we served together somewhere. But that builds that bond. So when my squad, you know the family, you know the leader, you know the kids, you got this community, and we're strong together. So it's okay to talk to all those pieces, connect the dots. And when we find that soldiers are connected to something bigger than themselves, they're more connected not just to the military, they're connected to, you know, the society. And then we'll see less of those uh, bad things that happen. It's all about that connection. Absolutely. You know, in SMA, you, you hit it on the head. I mean, it's about building a team. And, you know, you mentioned moms and dads out there. That's what they'd expect, too. I mean, this is their young child. In many cases, their only child, right? The, their son or their daughter, and they give them to the Army. And I always used to tell my soldiers that our job is to treat them better than their parents did, because that's the expectation of moms and dads across America. So, Sergeant Major, you talked about process, bringing your Sergeant Majors in and creating a forum to get after these categories. What was some of the feedback that you received from the process from your senior Sergeant Majors? They really liked it. We know everything we do in the Army, you got to do an after-action review. So uh, (laughs) it's just, it's required. It's it's 
it's just theorem. It's how we do. We, you know, we're harder on ourselves than anybody else is. So they really liked the interaction that you had a purpose. You were here to help solve a big army problem. We didn't just come to get told what to do by the sergeant major of the army. And that's part of that whole ownership. If I can help solve the problem, I'm also part of the solution. If it's just me saying, go do this, you're like, uh, I really buy in that this is my idea. And the worst thing that you know people can say to me is like, this is the, Star Man's the Army's initiative. I'm like, no, it's ours. So when you bring everybody in, and that's the feedback we got, is that when you bring them in and say, here's the problem, I don't have the solution, I need your help. Then when they walk out, they go, yeah, I worked on that. I know that. I'm going to do that. I have ownership on that. That's the feedback we got. We got to do more of that is take time to listen. We did that with the soldier solarium at West Point. We brought soldiers up there. We mm-hmm. try to get their feedback. But I also wanted to get the feedback of the leaders that we encourage and require to lead us through. So we probably should ask them for what are their thoughts. <laughs> you know, so, but that's the whole point. And then after we ask them their thoughts and they have these ideas, we got to share those good ideas throughout the Army. We found that's why we need that monthly forum. So the feedback was they enjoyed it. It helped solve Army problems. It wasn't just sitting down in receive mode. Here's what we're doing to you. It's please help us. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, and you mentioned it too. This is about team. It's not just one person's idea, including everybody. When the idea comes right, the team wins, they feel good. And the good thing is when you include everybody and something goes wrong and you have to go back and redo it, then just the SMA wasn't wrong. It was all good. Oh, yeah. It was no, everyone no, no. else too. Right? I take all that. No, it's me. <laughs> if anything goes wrong, uh, I think that goes with the job. If it goes all bad, it's my fault. If it's all good, it it's was somebody their, else's idea. Team. Well, you're very humble, SMA. You know, it sounds like the time you spent with the team was real important, and it's going to have an effect on the force. We know that. And we've seen the work that you've done with you and team in the past, our major, and, and the culture is changing. But you mentioned something earlier. Great ideas and great initiatives out of these forums come up, but none of them are any good until someone puts them into action. So how are you going to accomplish this? What are some of your expectations and the outcomes that you achieved during this forum? Yeah, and we talked a little bit about this in our first meeting. There has to be a little bit of a data in there. Data isn't everything. So when I look at data, that's compliance. And again, I'm using this as my own way to do better is I've been good at compliance. So when you get to the commitment, it's not about meeting that number. It's about what do we learn from it? That's ultimately the goal is to make the Army better. We have to decide. And what does that look like? You know, I like to go with the positives. You know, if I have a really high, you know, PT average, I have really high expert badges, and I have really high weapons qualification, I'll have less of this, and that's something I can measure. How do I learn from that and not just always look at the negative? How many sexual assaults did you have? How many DUIs? How much domestic violence? Yeah. But get further upstream and say, what are the positives that we can look at? And if those are high, so that's the outcomes that we're looking for, and that's how we're using it. Again, this is my own coaching, and for me and everyone is get out of the compliance and get to the commitment to learn, and when we fail, don't fail big. It's just learn from it, change it, and then readdress again, and I think that's the ultimate goal. Absolutely, SMA. SMA, I'd like to shift gears just a little bit. Related subject, but slightly different. You you and the chief have been working on for some time. That's talent management, critically important to affecting the culture of the Army because the leaders are there to do that. We are scheduled to do an update with the Talent Management Task Force in a few weeks. We've done several over the last year and a half. Could you share your thoughts on the preliminary feedback you're receiving and where you think the efforts will take us in the future? We really made some great gains. And this year, in November, we'll do the first Brigade Command Sergeant Major Assessment. That'll be binding. So. If you go through and you're found not ready, then you will not be a brigade sergeant major in the Army. So that's where we're headed. And we've done three pilots of the first sergeant's assessment program. I think that's almost ready to go, you know, kind of go IOC and just start doing it. So we've got a really good model and they'll give you all the details. But what we're looking at with that one is that it's almost like an EIB. You'd have this core facilitator group that comes out to a post and then they will help you as a post run your first sergeant assessment program as opposed to 
with the battalion commander's assessment program. You bring everybody in centrally. Well, that's a lot of first sergeants in the Army to bring them all centrally to do it once a year, and then it wouldn't work with our cycles. So I think that's about ready to go uh, prime time, or at least uh, initial operating capacity next year. But we are doing those assessments with Brigade this November, and that will be binding. So if we get the talent, if we get the leaders right, and we set the culture of the Army, that's not compliant, it's about learning and culture, and we get the leadership right, the future of the Army always looks great, will really propel us into the future. And I think an Army that gets the leaders right, that has a great culture, can adapt to anything that happens. But this is super important. But I think we've got a good blueprint for the future. Yeah, absolutely, Sergeant Manor. We agree. And it's something we've been following closely the Army throughout the last 18 months. And you can tune in next month for Shoulder Today podcast series with the key members of the Talent Management Task Force to hear an update on all the efforts across officer, enlisted, and warrant officer. So tune in for that next month. SMA, we have not had a forum since the time you assumed your role as SMA back in August of 2019 without discussing one topic the ACFT. Now, since the topic somehow always presents itself, if we're in a noon report, someone always asks it. I figured we'd satisfy our listeners' curiosity because they're thinking about it right now as they're listening to this podcast, waiting for us to talk about it. Can you give us an update? Where do we stand with ACFT? March 22, (laughs) ACFT is coming. So so we did put out, in all sincerity, we did put out uh, Department of the Army X Order. Everybody has to take the ACFT, just like we did all the other years. But uh, we still have an independent review. We had the second independent review because the University of Iowa already did that independent review. You know, then the NDAA, since you're going to do an O, and so RAND is doing that. We had the initial findings in May. We'll get our second findings in August, which is next month, which is next week. So uh, we'll meet with them again to see where we're at. And then their final findings for the second independent review by RAND will be due in December. But another independent review, uh, I guess, Turn two for the University of Iowa. And this was already scheduled to already do because we've been working on this for years. So the University of Iowa is going to do the second version of what we would ask them to look at on their uh, independent review. They're just going to look at it. So the first time it says, hey, is this war test and battle bills? Does that correlate to the Army Combat Fitness Test? And they said yes. And then they're designed to do another look at that and see the outcome. So all that's going to be in the next few months for a decision or do we need to make any adjustments, but I'm still sticking to it. March 22. So do I still have to take the ACFTS? You have to take the ACFT. <laughs> We're seeing our numbers increase. So yeah. uh, I look at it every week and we get about one to two percentage points every week on who has taken it. We need that data to decide, do we have it all right? And Rand needs it for part of the study. Yeah. And SMA, just to help you out, I've taken it seven times in the past and it hasn't hurt me. It's okay. You're still here. Good. I'm still yeah. here. I'm okay. Uh, and even, I, I can say, even during a global pandemic, all the gyms are closed and everybody says, Sorry, Major, all the gyms are closed. I don't have a gym in my hotel. And I, I get a lot of this from the, you know, are you going to give everybody Compo 2 and 3 gym memberships? Well, the global pandemic did not facilitate gym memberships. The most fascinating thing, this is just me individually. I increased my score by 20 points. You know, the gyms on Meyer have been closed. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. I just yeah, took all the, the exercises that they have in the, the manual, and I just kind of worked hard at those exercises. And it worked. And it worked. It's oh crazy. Uh, increase the 20. <laughs> I never thought I would beat uh, my score from the first time I took it. I'll be honest with you. I get older, and I thought, no, that's not going to work. But an yeah. increase of 20 points, that's pretty significant. So, Well, listeners, this sold it today podcast. You heard it here from the 16th SMA. If you do PT you'll probably get better at it, friends. <laughs> shocking, shocking. Shocking. SMA, it, it's always a pleasure to have you on with us. And we could spend hours, and I know our listeners would have loved to hear the multitude of things that you're working on at any given day in the Army, but your time is short. I, I'd like to give you the last words. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to provide our listeners? Yeah, I just want to say again how proud I am of all our soldiers, active, guard, and reserve. And I just look at the little things – that we do on a daily basis, like let's take the vaccine for COVID. And people go, well, why would you talk about the vaccine? Well, we didn't develop the vaccine, but most people don't realize that every vaccine that's contracted for all America, like all Americans, 
was done by the Army Contracting Command. So if you went to your local CVS and got a shot, that was done for the Army Contracting Command. So most people don't know what the Army has done. And that's kind of what I like to think of. Those quiet professionals out there, they don't do it for the name or the glory. They just do it for the good, not just of the good of the military, but you know, in this case, the good of all Americans. So I'm extremely proud of what uh, your Army has done for this country and what they continue to do. Well, thanks, SMA. And just repeat the last word because it means so much for the good of our country. God bless you, SMA. Our time has come to the end to close this edition of Soldier Today podcast. All of us here at the Association of the United States Army want to thank SMA Michael Grinson for joining us today for this great update and the many ongoing initiatives he is spearheading across the Army. I'm confident we will have you back in the studio soon, and we look forward to hosting you at this year's annual meeting in October. As Army alums, I can say from all of us around the country, thank you. And thank you to all the soldiers for all they do and continue to do. And thank you for continuing to be the Army that sets the proud traditions of maintaining itself as the greatest land power force in the world. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Army Matters Podcast on iTunes and everywhere podcasts are found. The Army Matters Podcast series is brought to you by the Association of the United States Army, the U.S. Army's professional association, member-supported, Army-connected. Visit us at AUSA.org for more information or to become a member. Your membership helps AUSA continue to carry out its mission to educate, inform, and connect with the total Army, our industry partners, and our supporters of a strong national defense. For questions or to provide topic recommendations, email us at podcast at AUSA.org. Have a great Army day. Hua.